So you are coming home from the hypermarket with a brand new pack of Dark Beginnings 1, hoping to pull a holographic pot of greed or snatch steel. You are sifting through the cards, and then you get to this thing of a card. It was a black, double-sided card with text, but not rules text. These tip cards are not involved in gameplay in the least, but they offer gameplay tips, strategy, and bizarrely life advice. While doing research for the video, I found this card. It is good to hear that the messages of the anime, those being friendship and treating your opponent with respect, made it into the physical card game in some way. When Yami Yugi is not sending people to the Shadow Realm anyway. The quality of advice varied substantially. Some of it was focused on individual cards like Dark Geroid or Spirit Reaper, or early archetypes like Gravekeepers, Amazonas, and the Chessboard Archfiends. There is also a card for Guardians, but I am not sure that that counts as an archetype, even in 2004. Part of the cards boiled down to BUY MORE CARDS! But I think some of the advice is actually quite salient. The Advantages of Normal Monsters Part 2, for example, mentions Skill Drain, which is still limited at the time of production. Non-spellcasting area, however, has never been meta-relevant. Deck thinning and deck shrinking seem like the same concept to me. They define deck thinning by cards which specifically tutor. For some reason, they picked the card Gather Your Mind to illustrate this. The only reason I could think that they would pick Gather Your Mind over Thunder Dragon was the combo they mentioned with Royal Magical Library. Keep in mind, this was before the best deck thinning card ever was printed, Toon Table of Contents. Deck shrinking is essentially cycling or cantrips. Cards like Jar of Greed and Upstart Goblin are good examples. Perhaps this is the inspiration behind Patrick Hoban pioneering the triple Upstart Goblin 10 years later. It seems like common knowledge that draw power is win power, but in 2004, I had someone unironically tell me that Pot of Greed was bad because if you run out of cards in the deck, you lose. He also ran a 60 card deck. Playground Yu-Gi-Oh! was a lot more interesting. Flat is flat and that is that. I don't care about science of facts of fact. The cards which really stand out to me are the ones which talk about core strategies, like the two which deal with alternate win conditions those being Exodia and Final Countdown. Tip cards promoting young players to play stall decks. Is this why we had to have the new end of match procedures 10 years later? Speaking of the tournament scene, the Do Not Brag card mirrors the new privacy rule that was implemented at the time of writing. Quote, Just like the cartoon, bragging about your deck or telling your opponent what cards you have can hurt you in the end. The prophecy of the tip card is upon us! It is easy to dismiss the tip cards as native advertising, but keep in mind a couple key factors. This information was presented to young children. I was nine at the time when Dark Beginnings came out. So to a young kid, this was a treasure trove of information for an aspiring duelist. The other caveat was that internet access was not so widespread 15 years ago. So finding out information on Yu-Gi-Oh! was limited to official products and the anime. And we all know that Seto Kaiba screws the rules. The tip cards continue to be printed in duelist packs, and I have a copy from a 5Ds set. For some reason, they changed the cards from black to white, foreshadowing the dichotomy between the normal and dark synchro monsters, no doubt. This GX tip card in particular sticks out in my mind for some reason. It's not just that I had a machine deck that used the combo of Future Fusion and Overload Fusion to bring out a massive Chimera tech Overdragon, but I swear I have seen this all before.